Welcome back. For those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Jen Rhodes, and I'm the Assistant Director of the Textile Design Program at Thomas Jefferson University. I'm also a proud alum of Philadelphia Textiles Class of 1996. I'm excited to welcome you today to our very first webinar, This is Textile Design. Today's session, Textile Design, A Day in the Life, is presented by Jessica Thies. Jess is a designer and project manager of color and textiles for Lori Weitzner Design in New York City. She's also an alum of our class of 2017. Today, Jess will share with you her experiences designing for a high-end residential textile wall and wall coverings brand, walking you through a day in the life of a textile designer. Throughout today's presentation, I will be serving as the moderator for Q&A. Please use the Q&A button on your screen to send a question. Comments are always welcome in the live chat. However, questions will be reserved for the Q&A portion of today's webinar. Please note, all microphones will be muted throughout our presentation today. Jess, I'm happy to turn it over to you. Hi everyone, I'm Jess. I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, today I'm gonna speak a little bit about my experience working for Lori Weitzner. So I'm currently a designer and a project manager for Lori. Um, that's our studio in Manhattan. We're based in Chelsea. Um, so I work on the textiles and the color work in the studio. And I've been working for Lori for about three years. Uh, for the first six months, I was a junior designer and then I was kind of promoted into this role. Um, this is another image of our studio. As you can see, um, we organize everything in our studio by color as uh, according to the books on the right side. Uh, color is very important to Lori and she wrote a book about it, which I'll talk a little bit about later. Um, but we call it the white box sanctuary because uh, white is very important for us to have a clean working space and just be creative. Um, and this is one of our wall covering panels. A little bit about who Lori is. So Lori began her career selling textiles through Europe um, and then she became the design director for Jack Leonard Larson, who's a very well-known textile designer. Um, she's also designed products for Sacco, Estee Lauder, Calvin Klein, um, and we have products housed in the v &A in London and the Cooper Hewitt in New York City. She's founded Weitzner Limited Wall Coverings, I would say about 15 years ago now. Um, and then that was later partnered with Pollock, um, which is another textile company. And since then we also design Weitzner Textiles. Uh, so this is a little image of our studio team and we're a mix of part-time and full-time employees. Um, and you can also see our studio dog down there who's a very important member. Um, so this is Lori's book, which is called Ode to Color, and in it she discusses the 10 essential color palettes for living and design. Um, and basically she kind of thinks that color is related to our personality and the way that we use color in our space can really affect how we are designing. And I think now that we're working from home, maybe people really are starting to understand that even more. That if you're locked up in a small New York City apartment, you know, like I am, um, you really kind of are understanding that your space really makes a difference. So uh, this is actually a color test that we designed based on the book. And we worked with a psychologist to build this. And basically, if you take the test, it can tell you what color palette from her book uh, you can actually uh, should be using in your home to actually make your space feel a little bit better. Um, so, you know, I'm actually the gold color palette, which means that you're creative, but it kind of depends on what your uh, personality is, what color you should be using in your space. So we work on many different product categories in the studio, and I can go into detail later with that. But no matter what we're designing, we always start with inspiration. Um, so we also have flowers and objects from when we're traveling in the studio that we'll draw from. 
Um, we are always like reading books and looking at photography and we keep boards up in our studio. So like I said, all everything is white. So then we fill those white spaces with images and sketches and um, ideas. So we just have ideas kind of flowing all the time. And I think that's really important. And whenever we're designing a new collection, we kind of start with these boards and we'll build a theme and then build mood boards and stuff around that. Um, another great way that we great take inspiration is by taking little studio field trips, as we call them. So this is a workshop that we did at RISD. Um, Lori and I go to Italy once a year. Normally, we didn't get to go this year, but uh, we're uh, in Como, which there's a lot of textile mills that are still there. And we can look at products there and um, source products from there. And it's just a really good time to, um, you know, see at all the different mills that maybe are not always visiting the US. And then this is when we visited uh, this designer studio and she's actually a tapestry weaver. So I would look her up. She's really a cool artist. Um, this is when I visited a printing mill. Uh, they're down south and they're weaving one of our digital prints. And this is called Aviary. And then we're always um, trying to go to museums, I would say like once a season. So this is at the Cooper Hewitt and we're looking at Margarita Mergentheim's work and she was a designer in the 30s. And then we went to the Color Factory, which is in New York. So if you haven't been, I would, I would recommend going to that when things reopen. Um, and so once we, we go on these trips or you know, we're just looking for inspiration and have a theme, uh, then we'll come back to the studio and we'll actually get to create artwork. And this is such a great part of my job because I do get to do actual artwork in the studio all the time. Um, not every day, I, I would say, uh, but, but every once in a while I do get to do that and that's, that's really fun. So we paint and collage, we make stencils, and we really have freedom to be creative and come up with new artwork, which then ins inspires designs as we go forward in our process. Um, I think an important part of what we do is that we are collaborating with suppliers, like I said, so um, we'll have meetings with suppliers around the world. Right now we're doing it via Zoom, which is a little hard with fabric, but it is really nice in person and they'll kind of bring their samples and we'll get to pick from their samples. And I think the goal of that is for us to understand who can create what based on what resources and um, looms, et cetera, that they have. And then once we pick samples, um, then we'll develop artwork kind of based on what we think would look good in that kind of quality. And then we can kind of create a finished, a finished pattern like here. And then once we're happy with the quality, which is design and the actual fabric, then we'll do color work on that because we typically always want more than one color in the line. Um, so color work is definitely my favorite thing to do in, and, um, so if something is piece dyed, we will spec, you know, maybe it's just one piece of fabric for that to be dyed as, or if it's yarn dyed, then we'll spec a range of yarns that we have from like embroidery thread or actual yarns supplied from the mills, um, for what, what are their resources in yarn. Um, and we have about 30 of these color drawers on the right side that we can kind of play with in the studio, plus a whole bunch of other samples and archives that we've collected. Um, and so if a pattern is more complicated where it is uh, woven, where we're specking the warp and the weft of the colors, then we'll kind of create a color blanket. Um, so in this case, typically the yarns are supplied from the mill and then we will spec, I don't know, so many warp colors, so many weft colors, and typically we'll have like over a hundred combinations that we will cut up in these little pieces, lay out on our big table and pick from. 
and we'll you know narrow that down to three to seven colors probably that end up actually going into our line. So specifically, um, the main products that we design are for Weitzner and I work on the fabric and we are a high-end residential brand and so we design the fabric and then our clients are interior designers and architects and they buy our fabric to use in their projects. Um, so this is kind of a selection of some of our draperies and upholsteries that we have in our line. Um, we launch two collections a year and I do everything from helping the marketing team, doing the spec sheets, making purchase orders. Um, so it's not just design, um, but since I work on a small team, I kind of get to do a little bit of everything, which I enjoy. Um, so here you can kind of see some of the artwork, which has been inspired into a fabric. Uh, this is a burnout and this is a digital print. So, and here, so this is uh, some of the yarns which became these fabrics here. And then this one is, uh, this was the original artwork and then it got printed here and kind of some of the colors that we spec'd for that. Then we have the wall covering part of Weitzner and this is, you know, what Lori is really known for and um, a really fun, innovative uh, product category. It is not the same as wallpaper. Wall covering is um, a bit more high end. Um, so this is actually velvet that's foil printed over. Um, these are handmade panels that um, are actually abaca fiber that's made into a pulp and then created into a design and they have open spaces so you can kind of paint your wall of any color and then put that over it. So it really is like playing with the space and kind of figuring out what designers can do with it. We've seen them put this um, in between glass and do really cool innovative things with that. Um, and then these are like foil printed this is foil printed on a textile and this I think is on a grass cloth. So, you know, we just have a whole range of, uh, and I think we're always trying to figure out what is the new thing that we can do to kind of push those boundaries. Um, as, so this is a handmade, uh, made of magazine strips. We're really well known for Newsworthy, which is handmade newspaper. Um, it's woven like newspaper strips, uh, and that was maybe one of the first handmaids that Lori came out with. So uh, we also have clean vinyl in our line and it's clean because the vinyl doesn't have any um, harmful uh, carcinogens in it. So this is good for hospitality use. And um, this is actually a Mylar version and you can kind of see some of the color work here that we expect for that. And this is fun because we get to go actually up um, to this supplier and run production about twice a year with them. Uh, so, and then on this side, you can kind of see actually one of the wall coverings be in, being installed. So this is a digital print. And I think it's kind of helpful if you've never seen wall covering before to understand like how it's pieced together on a wall. And on uh, our top left here, we have our magnetism, which is a magnetic wall covering, which we have patented. Um, nobody can really do anything like it. It's, this is a linen uh, ground and then there's like a magnet behind it. So that's very cool to put in a space. Uh, we also launched a jewelry collection last year, I believe. And that has just been a really big journey for everyone because it's our Lori Weitzner company. We do everything from marketing sales to the operations of the website. Um, and uh, that's me modeling in the pictures. So it's been really fun to design um, textiles into jewelry and really combine um, our love for fabric and embroidery and beading and kind of create a new product category. So you can kind of see some of the things we have here. We have earrings and bracelets and chokers. We have bags, 
uh, we just launched a couple bridal pieces. Um, that was like one of the original designs. So that's been a very fun project and we will put the link to that later. Um, we also do licensing projects. So it'll be Lori Weissner for another brand. Um, this is for Samuel and Sons, which is a trim company. Um, so you can kind of see, uh, we'll come up with the designs and do the color work for them. And then it'll be marketed under their brand. Um, we do about one collection a year for them. And then here you can see some of our wall covering actually wrapped around lampshades. So this was a fun project that we did for Lux Lance. And then this is actually Samuel and Sons trim that Lori Weissner did for them. Um, and there you can see the wall covering that's actually wrapped around the lamp. So you can kind of see how those can be used for so many different things. Uh, this was a rug line that we did for perennials and they're indoor outdoor rugs. Um, hence the little ducks down there. And when we do collaborations with clients like this, a lot of times we will kind of get to see samples and qualities that they already have of rugs and we'll pick what we think will work compared to the artwork that we create. So you, this is the artwork that became this rug and then we actually added an ombre to that and this is the artwork that made that rug. So um, it's really a collaboration between us and these brands that we work with to kind of create a finished product when we're licensing. And this is a rug collection we did for West Elm in 2017. Then we uh, do a line of cards for papyrus slash American greeting. So these will still be sold in Target and uh, in other certain retailers now that papyrus is no longer. Um, but this is, I think, one of our favorite things to do because we actually get to draw the samples and then we'll embroider them and show them what kind of embroidery qualities we want the cards to be. We'll design like the inside of the envelopes and we'll pick the envelope color. So we really get to do everything in this process. And I think just spending a week like embroidering in the studio is the best. So that's kind of some of the original sketches for those. Um, and then we did launch a line in Papyrus last year based on the book. So these are two of the color worlds, Waterside and Garden Party. And um, this was a fun thing to design and kind of read Lori's book and kind of make patterns based on what she was trying to say, I think. Um, and how to convey that to people in a visual strategy. And um, these are some of the butterflies that I drew that became a notebook and wrapping paper, et cetera. So that was a fun project. And then we just launched recently two tiles for artistic tile. And that's the first time that we've ever really done 3D products. So I think that was um, a whole new ball game for us, but it was really great to uh, go to their offices, where it, which are in New Jersey, and kind of see their different qualities of tile and stone and kind of figure out how, as textile designers, are we going to create um, these physical hard materials? And you can see those are like some of the original samples that we did to try to translate fabric and woven tech things into something else and then we kind of scanned those and made designs from there. Um, so I think that was a challenge but we always want a challenge as designers I think to keep kind of pushing ourselves and expanding. So um, and then finally um, Lori does consulting for various brands so we work with Hunter Douglas all the time um, and we also work with Reform. So I mostly help them with color work or um, sometimes if they want to work with guest designers, we'll interview them and kind of work with them that way. So it's really good as to kind of see what bigger brands do in terms of their operations um, also. So thank you so much. I think I talked a little fast.
Um, but that's my email. If you guys want to email me, um, we have our website down below, which is lauriweitzner.com. And then these are our Instagram handles. Um, and lauriweitznershop.com is the jewelry website. If you want to go to that. So thank you. Uh, we currently have four questions in the queue. So to be fair, we'll start with the first one that came in. Jess, what about your role excites you and what keeps you coming to work day after day? Um, well, I think I never know what my, e my like, email box is going to be every day. Things are always changing and always different. And, you know, we always are doing new projects. So Lori could say tomorrow, oh, we're doing a new rug project or something. And I think whenever that happens, it's go, go, go into the design process. Um, and th I think that's the fun part is whenever you get to kind of bring together new ideas and create themes and pitch them to people and do the initial artwork is, is always really good. Oops. Thank you. So our next question, what was it about your design style and process or portfolio that made you a good fit for Lori Weitzner's studio? I think that it is a combination of being creative and systematic in a way. I, I think there's only so much of my job that is about the actual design itself. We do do a lot of artwork and um, product development, but so much of it is communicating with people and um, emailing and working with clients. And so I think that having kind of uh, I, I want to say almost like an analytical brain helps helps me a lot. Thanks. We have another question here. Jess, how detailed do you need to understand the dimensions of the items you are designing the fabric for? For example, a pillow, a couch, a lazy chair, sheets, etc. Or can you create good designs without knowing these specifications? Or Perhaps there is someone else on your team that does this. So what actually happens is we design everything to be about 54 inches and sell fabric on as a roll. So we never know what interior designers are going to use our fabrics for. So that's actually a really interesting question um, because sometimes we'll design an embroidery that we see as pillows and then people will use it as drapery or upholster it and um, you know, it's always a surprise to us, honestly, to see what other designers use our products as. Um, I do think it's easier, honestly, when we do have specific licensing projects where we are designing for uh, a specific shape or use, because you can kind of design for that end use. Um, so it's definitely a challenge to not have that most of the time. Um, Jen, we can't hear you. I had one of my Q&A boxes blocking the microphone, so I forgot, sorry. When you do a collection for another company, do they tell you what colors they want or do you come up with the colors for them? Oh, uh, we pretty much always come up with the colors. It, it's, a, it's a conversation. I think we'll usually design more than they need and they'll probably pick, um, but I think because color is something pretty close to our heart and we have a pretty specific color palette, which is mostly neutrals. We don't really do like crazy bright colors or anything. Um, we, we might do that if somebody asked us to, but we probably would, would want to do the color work ourselves. Thank you. How much time do you spend in front of the computer designing versus creating by hand as part of the process of your design? That's a good question. Um, I think it kind of depends on each of our own personal styles. So me personally, I probably spend like 40% doing the original sketching and then I'll scan and do layouts and stuff on the computer. 
um, but other people would rather work on the computer. Um, one of our designers just, she's not as confident doing like watercolors. So, she, you know, she'll kind of go directly to the computer and feel way more comfortable doing that. So it's really up to us what techniques and processes we want to use. Thanks. Any advice for fiber students going into their senior year of school slash entering the job market? I think just entering the job market, I'll do first. Um, I think just research as many companies as you can um, and reach out to them. We, we're so small um, that I think a lot of times people don't know that we're open sometimes maybe because we're small so we're, we're not posting things a lot and I think there's probably a lot of places in our industry that we're so connected as an industry that I think just kind of understanding what mills and brands are still out there and kind of making connections and internships with them especially are really helpful um, and I think I am of like the multiple girls that work at our studio, I'm one of the only ones that didn't intern before. I would say that like 70% have interned with Lori first before getting hired. So I think making really strong relationships with the people you're interning for is the best way. Um, advice on going into your senior year, have the most fun you can and take as many textile classes as possible. Do you design wovens, dobby, or jacquards? Um, we design everything, but I would say the majority overwhelmingly is jacquard and then embroideries. Um, that's just what a lot of the looms and machinery uh, that our suppliers have. How much of the work you do is speculative compared to specifically for a customer project? Um, I think it depends how busy we are. So I think we're usually um, pretty busy where we're on a cycle with Weitzner that um, if we're not working on something else, we'll kind of start designing for that probably. Um, because you never know when the next project is going to pop up and that could be in the middle of your cycle that you're supposed to be designing for Weitzner. So I think we're always developing artwork and ideas kind of in the back of our head for that. Um, but I don't know if we ever really have that much time to just design without a specific purpose. Um, but we also have an archive of artwork in our studio from past years of people that have worked there, Lori's artwork from years ago, past interns, and we always are referring to that um, when we need new ideas. We kind of go back to the archives. Thanks. So we have two questions that are somewhat related, so I'm going to ask them in combination. Do you design and repeat? What steps do you take between artwork and resolved textile design? And the related question is, what programs do you use to take the artwork from paper to being printed or woven? So we do uh, typically design and repeat um, for fabric wall covering. Um, and it depends on what the width of the fabric's typically 54 inches, but the wall coverings could be 36, et cetera. So we have to kind of take take those things into consideration. Um, and I, we pretty much use Photoshop Illustrator because um, we're small. Um, so we don't have like uh, bigger programs like Net Graphics, et cetera. Um, and I think that basically what our process is, is we'll do hand sketches first, scan those in and then we'll either kind of trace them into Illustrator and kind of create more um, specific patterns that are a little bit easier to translate, unless it's like a digital print. Um, and if we're doing that, then we'll put that into Photoshop and kind of create a layout the same way you would do in school. Thanks. All right, so this next question is a long one, so I'm going to just read it word for word. What do you think of companies such as Spoonflower 
that allow artists that may, may not be textile designers to get their designs on fabric. Don't know how far these designs get through in terms of the larger world. Do you have to be trained as a textile designer to do textile design and be hired into companies of the industry? Um, so I, I'll answer the Spoonflower part first. I think it's a good resource for people that want to do smaller things. Um, I don't know if that affects um, a different part of the market, but it doesn't affect our part of the market because our fabrics are a bit more um, higher end, just to say. Um, most of our stuff is like woven in Italy, et cetera the type of fabric that you're going to get printed at Spoonflower is kind of different. Um, and I think most of our clients still shop directly um, through the industry rather than from con consumers don't necessarily buy directly from us. So it, it doesn't really affect us. Um, do, you, do you need me to you repeat the second part? Sorry. Well, you have to be trained as a textile designer to do textile design and be hired into companies of the industry? So I think that it's, um, it depends. So we've, uh, one of the girls that I work with was a trained as a graphic designer and then studied fashion and she's a great textile designer, but I think she definitely has an understanding for composition and repeat, et cetera, which I think you do need. So I think having some kind of design background is very important. Um, but there are ways to kind of learn um, on the job. But to say that she interned at multiple textile design studios and she also worked for another designer, uh, fabric designer before us. So she wasn't trained as a textile designer per se, but then she got a lot of experience in the industry, which I think is really the most important thing. Thanks. So we have two questions that I'm going to combine. How long have you been working for Lori Weitzner? And what would you like to be doing in the future, say 10 to 15 years from now? Uh, that's a big question. Uh, I've been working for Lori for over three years now. Um, in 10 years, I would really like to be designing probably products made out of completely sustainable fibers, et cetera. Um, I just kind of see the world going in a place that's um, full circle where we kind of create things and then they biodegrade back into the earth and they're made from food or et cetera. So I think that's kind of where our industry is going, making like smart products. And I think that would be fun to be working in. Thanks. Do you follow the color trends laid out by leading forecasters or do you in your job create your own palettes that align with the Lori Weitzner aesthetic? So I think that Lori would say that we create our own trends. That being said, we do follow Lee Edelcourt and her design studio, um, or their, her trend studio, sorry, quite a lot. Um, we don't get her magazine, which is Bloom, but we do participate in a lot of her talks and stuff. So I think we don't go on WGSN or anything like that. We kind of try to feel from clients and from our own personal um, thoughts, I guess, what we think the next colors are going to be. Um, but we do kind of pay attention, I think, to what other people are saying also. Thank you. All right. In addition to internships, are there other experiences you took advantage of in school that you think were really important to developing your personal style? I absolutely would encourage everyone to study abroad. I went to Harriet Watt in Scotland, and I think um, that just helped me as a designer. I think just be a little bit more kind of confident and learn how other people teach and um, that, you know, they kind of work in a completely different style and it's both, it's good to get both kind of experiences. And I think having some kind of international travel experience really helps your resume a little bit. Um, I know for Lori, you know, she felt confident sending me to Italy. 
to look for fabric because she knew that I had like lived somewhere else. So. Thank you. And so far, this is our last question, but we still have plenty of time if you'd like to write in and send some more. I think creating sustainable textiles would be a great idea. What would be the durability of these for daily usage, considering they would be made to break down? It's kind of a tough one. I think that is a tough one. And maybe Becky can jump in here. But, you know, I think um, right now that is maybe part of the problem is that people want things that are extremely durable, but also completely naturally made. And that's just, they don't really go together. You know, polyester is going to be stronger than cotton, et cetera. Um, that being said, I think that there is really cool development happening out there. Um, you know, spider silk is stronger than Kevlar. So there, you know, I don't think that's quite there yet in terms of, you know, being, but there are things being made out of that now. So who knows in 10 years where things are going to be. So. We're always, our industry is always developing um, latest and greatest and new innovations to find more eco-friendly ways to produce fibers, more eco-friendly ways to add the color to the fabrics and yarns, and then how we can handle them um, after the end of their life cycle. So to just kind of add to that sustainability issue, um, it's, it's a it's a daily quest within the industry. I think I'm I'm reading something a few times a week about some new innovation. It's really uh, for me an exciting part of being involved in the industry. And I think that's also like the challenge for students in school is to really kind of figure out what are the what are those solutions going to be. Absolutely. All right. So we have a couple more who popped that popped in. Uh, let's see. So this is a comment on the sustainability. I think it's more about changing the way we think about the life cycle of a, pro of a product, which I absolutely agree. Yeah, that's a good point. Do we really need something so durable that it can't biodegrade? I think that's a really good point. And there's an obsession with abrasion in our industry and people, so basically like, you know, you rub like something on the fabric to see how durable it is and um, you know, it goes like this, or there's one that goes like this, either way. So there's people in the industry that test to like 200,000. And I have a friend that works in, um, she only specs really for hotels and really high hospitality. She's an interior designer. And she's like, oh, I don't, I don't shop anything under 100,000. And I'm like, after a certain point to us, as because we understand fabric, it doesn't actually make that big of a difference. But people are really obsessed with that number. And so I think totally changing people's perspective on that is, is really important. That hasn't changed. People have been obsessed with that number for a really yeah. long time. You yeah. hear the number of commas in the number keep jumping up, you know, number of digits keep jumping. Uh, what do you know now that you wish you knew in school? Hmm. Um, what do I know now? Hmm. I, I think I wish in school that I had, I, I wish I had taken like every single textile class possible. I didn't, I wish I did. Um, <laughs> so I think that is, is my biggest maybe piece of advice is just kind of use every single resource possible to you. And, um, you know, yeah. And, all right, so at the moment, this is the last question. For someone who graduated with a design background but never worked in the industry, what tips would you recommend to get back into design? Um, I think, especially now with social media, just kind of creating your own work um, and kind of posting it and creating your own kind of portfolio is really important. Um, and maybe even just reaching out and seeing like, hey, I'm looking for some kind of opportunity. Can I do work for you, et cetera, and see if people respond. I think, you know, doing freelance is a good way to kind of get your feet wet a little bit and get some more experience um, to people can want to hire you. Thanks. We have one more. How long are your typical days? For example, 10 hours, eight hours, six days a week? 
Uh, we we are really good about working like nine to five, only Monday through Friday most of the time. Um, sometimes I'll go to trade shows on the weekends. Um, every once in a while we'll work a Saturday if we have a studio event or I'll stay late if I'm working on something um, with a really hard deadline, but that's kind of rare, honestly. So I think that's maybe the difference between fashion and interiors. So for, for us, it's a little bit better. Are most of your customers in the U.S. or abroad? In other words, is there an appreciation for fine fabrics in the U.S.? Absolutely, yeah. So we have, so as I said, um, so Weitzner is actually partnered with Pollock, which is another textile company. And so all of our operations, our warehousing, our um, marketing, et cetera, is combined with theirs. Um, so our reps um, sell both of our collection and their collection, and they go to firms around the country. And uh, the majority of them are in the U.S. We do have show, and we're in some showrooms. So we're in some showrooms in Europe, in Hong Kong, and I think that's it. Uh, but the majority of them... I think there might be one or two in South America, but the majority of them are in the U.S. So, yeah, definitely. How has the transition in pandemic been? Um, I think that it was a little hard in the beginning. Um, uh, not just us, but everyone I know, all collections were put on hold for six months, which was hard, but I think we're kind of back to normal now. So... I think March, April, things were a little slow, but now things are, are back to normal. I'm at home right now, but I've been starting to go in about two days a week just because it is hard to look at fabric from here. So, yeah. Thanks. Can you speak to the role of critical feedback in your design process? How prepared were you for professional feedback after leaving the textile design program? Um, I, th I think it was actually pretty hard at first. Um, and I think it's, it wasn't necessarily that I wasn't prepared for feedback because we know you get feedback in school and you t change things and you tweak things. But when you're designing for someone else, they're going to have a different aesthetic than you do probably. Um, so I think that kind of changing my mindset to not only design for what does Jess like, but what does Lori like? What do our clients like? What do our sales reps want us to design because it's going to sell? Um, what can I design that fits into a certain price point for a cer certain product category? It, that was kind of the thing that I had to kind of wrap my head around, I think, a little bit at first. Because um, the things you don't think about in school are what does this cost and um, where is this made? And those kind of things are really important. Thank you. All right. So last call for questions because I have no more waiting here on the list. Oh, there's one more. At your home, do you surround yourself with what you've designed or does your home include mostly what other people have designed? Do you do other creations besides textile design? Um, I would say it's a mix of both. So this is one of our fabrics I actually had in the presentation. Um, so yeah, my living room is full of white snow products also because we get samples and stuff. So we might as well use them. Um, I think that I am mostly a textile designer and, but I also have like paintings and stuff around that I've done or that friends have done. Um, so yeah. I, yeah, I definitely try to surround myself with artwork and fabric as much as possible. <laughs> What's one thing you wish you learned in school? Um, like about the industry specifically. Thank you for the qualification. About the industry. You know, I think I didn't realize how small of an industry it was necessarily. And some of the best relationships with people I work with are 
Philly U Texel alumni. Um, and I think having those kind of connections and relationships is super, super valuable and important. And um, so I, I don't know if it's just um, maybe finding those connections earlier and like going to events and stuff would have been really helpful. So. Do you work with hand weaving studios here or abroad? Uh, we haven't worked with any since I've worked here. We've, um, I know in the past we have, um, but we typically don't do that just because um, it's hard to kind of translate exactly a hand woven sample into something getting mass produced, I would say. So um, it's kind of good for inspiration, but not necessarily for making a final product. Were you able to work with at Creative Hunt? I loved that collaboration. Yes, so uh, we worked with Lisa Hunt um, for our recent spring collection launch. So if you go on the Weissner Limited website, which I'll put in the chat also. <laughs> uh, so that is the hub for uh, wall covering and fabric if you're interested in looking specifically at that. Um, so Lisa Hunt is a designer who is based in Brooklyn and we basically met up with her and thought she has really great um, kind of organic geometry that we don't necessarily have in our line and uh, she does all foil printing um, like hand printing and so we kind of tried to re replicate her style into our line into I think four or five products uh, that were launched in January. So I think we're going to start doing more and more artist collaborations um, just because it's good to not take over the whole collection, but infuse the collection with other styles to kind of reach more people. All right. Now this is the last one, at least for the moment. Since you get designs and products from companies, do you frequently change your curtains, pillows, etc.? Hmm. Um, so I haven't been, I've been in this apartment like two years, so I just kind of keep adding to it. Um, but I do have like a stockpile for like a future apartment. So yes, I think it's the correct answer to that. And also, um, Lori is constantly reupholstering and changing her apartment for things whenever she finds like a new favorite in the line. So so what do you do with the leftovers? Do you share them with your friends? Um, sometimes. Um, mostly I have like piles at my parents' house in their basement and they're not really thrilled about that, but you know. All right. So last call, the last last call for questions. We still have a few minutes left in our webinar time slot. Ah, here comes another one. No, you're, it's just a comment. Jess, your job sounds so fun. Thank you. Thank so you. So I agree. Thank you so much for presenting for us today, Jess. I think we all really enjoyed it. Um, there's a lot of information shared in the chat window today. Uh, Jess, are you reading the chats now? The chat comments now is the um, comment? Yeah, I'm looking at them. Definitely take the color test. It's super fun and really quick and easy. So, you know, just check that out. And can you see the Q&A now? So if somebody knows your coworker, Catalina, what a small world. We both went to FIT together. Oh, yes, yeah, she's my best friend. And um, I hang out with her and her dog a lot, so. <laughs> well, again, thank you, Jess. It was most enjoyable. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We hope to see you again tomorrow at 4 for our fourth installment, Straight to Paint, with our rising junior undergraduate, Julia Foster. Like yesterday, tomorrow's session will be a hands-on workshop, so get your paints ready. Um, there was a request for a materials list earlier in today's session, so we'll try to get that together and we can post it on our social media accounts to share that information. As always, the best way to learn more about us is to visit our spaces on campus. 
in these uncertain times, that's not possible. So follow us on social media, at Textile Design at Jefferson. By following us on social media, you also learn about our upcoming events. You can find links to sessions of this webinar and a lot uh, more information about that alumni doom session that's been such a popular topic for the last two days. So, or feel free to email me directly at jen.rhodes at jefferson.edu. Thanks again for watching and have a great evening. Thanks.